Welcome to a new Precious Plastic video. In this video series, we're going to show you how to set up a Precious Plastic workspace. Because recycling plastic is not just about building our machines, but you also need a space where you can sort out your plastic, where you can shred it, where you can separate it. So we'll show you how to do that in this video. And we're going to build this workspace inside a shipping container like this one. You can easily find them everywhere in the world and you can move them around which can come in handy. But also the size fits perfectly for what we need to set up a full equipped workspace. So we're going to turn this shipping container into a workspace like this. You can also download the template to make this miniature version of the workspace. It can come in handy if you are making a plan or scale model of your garden or place where you're going to install it. And it's just fun. So this is going to be quite some work. So if you already have a place yourself, I would suggest to use that. But you can still use this video as a reference to see the things you need to set up the workspace and what are the best measurements and the way how to organize it inside. You can find all the technical drawings and blueprints online in our download pack. And if you have a question, feel free to post the topic in our forums. And now we're gonna get started. All right, so this is what we're gonna do in this video. And the first step is to get a container. Yeah. So we're currently at the harbor in Rotterdam. It's in the Netherlands where all the containers come in. And they have a lot of them here around. Uh, we're looking for one to buy and it's super easy. I mean, they have so many of them around here. Um, you have different sizes to get. So at least you have different colors. But you also have super long ones like these ones. And this one is already a smaller one. We're going for the long one just because everything fits in nicely and we have plenty of space to work. Anyway, we're gonna pick a nice one now. The, the main thing to watch out for is just make sure it's, it's watertight and not rusted because they're all secondhand and been used for a few years. Besides that, they're all pretty much the same. It's amazing. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna look out for one and transport it to our workspace. So the container arrived and one thing to make sure you do before you park it is that you have enough space. So for instance here we don't really have that much space but on the other side we do because um, we want to make sure uh, we want to open up one side of the container so we need enough space to adjust and to work around with it. Before you put the container on the ground you can add some normal floor tiles underneath uh, to put the container on top. So in this way it floats a little bit, which makes it easier to paint later on. You want to make sure that your container is waterproof, so there are no little rusty holes in there. And a good way to check it out is to just close it. And if you have light shining through, you can see the holes. Looks pretty good. So as you can see, the container itself is not super strong. It can move around like this. It's because all the strength comes from these, the edges of the container. So the walls don't provide any support, which is kind of nice because that means you can also fully take them out if you want. Just make sure that you don't touch the edges because then it's not certified anymore. And you kind of want that if you want to ship it around. All right, so we got ourselves a container and it's properly parked outside. So now we're gonna do the first step, which is cutting it two big holes. So the first thing we're gonna do is open up the walls so we have some light and ventilation inside the container. However, this stuff is pretty heavy, all this metal and these big surfaces. So it's probably a two-man job. So I got my boy Jerry here. Yo, yo. So together we're gonna get started. <laughs> so let's get started. Yes. Yeah. 
So if you take out the wall, it's best to cut it as low as possible to the beams, um, because otherwise you end up with this edge, which you need to cut off now manually. So we cut out the window, but we left it closed on a few places, mainly because otherwise when you're grinding halfway in it already falls. Um, so this way you can cut 90% and then just do the last 10% and it just pops out. The holes are in the container and we finished up the edges so we can weld on top of it. And that's also our next step, to reinforce these holes to make sure they're strong and use these leftover sheets um, to make the windows that open and close. All right, so we cut out two big holes in the container. Now we're gonna reinforce them with some beams to make sure it's still strong. And we're gonna put a door in the big one. We use some woods in between here and also on the bottom. Um, that is to make sure we still have some space later so it can hinge open and close. And here is like a little hole, um, which is in that one as well. So we're gonna put in a metal rod and then we're gonna weld it together in there. Alright, so we finished the big door, this was the tough one, and now we're going to make the window frame for this smaller window where people are going to bring their plastic. So the frame is in, uh, make sure to put it on a few beams or anything that gives a little bit of height because we need this because later we're going to add a little counter on there. So we finished the window in front of our container and also the big one here in the back and we added some of these gas springs which you can find in the back of a car as well when they open up um, and it saves a lot of weight when you need to lift this whole thing up and if you cannot find a gas spring you could also make a door that just opens sideways but we like when the cover is like this because like now if it rains you have a nice dry spot Anyway, that's it for the video about the outside of the container. In the next one, we're going to focus more on the inside, the machines, the displays, and how to set that everything up. So, hope to see you in the next video. All right, so we finished the first step of this video series. I hope it was all clear. If you have a question, feel free to post the topic in our forums. 
You can download all the blueprints and technical drawings on our website. And in the next step, we're gonna build the entire interior for the workspace. So see you in the next video.